Greetings. Today's episode of the Lightcast is about brainwashing or and or deconditioning. But because I'm getting clever, I've used the clickbait title Thank you fat cells, I love you. And there is a correspondence. I'm going to weave those things together. Oftentimes in culture, when you hear about the concept of brainwashing, like someone out there may say, Jared's been brainwashed. And it's their observation that someone, usually someone has become part of an organization or they've given their attention to a way of thinking that kind of takes them outside of the mainstream or beyond the known or beyond the normal, socially acceptable ways of thinking on subjects. And I don't know about you, but generally speaking, when I've heard this phrase brainwashing used, um, it's kind of a negative derogatory thing. But as I reflect on my own experience of life, and especially uh, my experience over the past few years, um, it occurs to me that I have actually done a lot of brainwashing. And I have been the agent of this. And it occurs to me that as we are born into an environment, we are by default offered or offered a way of thinking, or there are suggestions for uh, mental structures and belief systems and structures that are in the environment in which we're born, and they're sort of offered to you. Um, and in many cases, and I can attest to this in my own experience, there's sort of an automatic acceptance of these brain structures and belief systems. I'm specifically referring to the brain, which is an organ in the physical body. There's the idea of the mind, um, and I think generally we can think about the mind being something a little bit more um, uh, beyond just the physical structure of the brain. But what we know about the brain is that it creates structures, neural structures and neural pathways and and, uh, synapses and all kinds of magical stuff is happening in there to support the experience we're having. So when you think a thought, there's all kinds of stuff happening in your physical body and in your brain, and your brain goes about building a structure that supports your thought. And it's sort of, um, uh, that structure becomes sort of like a, a perceptual lens through which you see the world. It's like, there's a structure in place that colors future perceptions or influences how you experience your life. I think that's a good way of saying that. So as a young person, a child uh, in an environment, like your your brain is building all sorts of structures um, and you're not um, mostly consciously aware that this process is occurring, at least for most of us. And so as we uh, grow into adulthood, I think I'm approaching the beginning of adulthood now in my experience. So I can sort of start to begin to speak from this place. So as we arrive at adulthood, um, we actually may have the privilege or the opportunity to say, now, wait a minute. How did I get here? Like, where did all of this uh, come from? And I'm going to use the word accumulation. Like, Throughout a life experience, you are accumulating data through your experiences, through your perceptions. And it's like, for me, it's like I can kind of feel myself carrying all of this stuff around with me. And I'll tell you, one of the first things that led me to embark on this process of washing my brain or deconditioning was... um, opening up about my sexuality and exploring my sexuality, my coming out, because that was a big one. So if you have um, 
a belief structure offered to you uh, that your natural way of being or your natural preferences are wrong and are to be avoided. And that can be to one degree subconscious or unconscious. Um, then moving yourself into a, f- a space where you are flirting with that boundary or that structure and kind of moving yourself beyond it or transcending it is really liberating. And then for me, after that happened, it's like, okay, well, what else is there that maybe isn't really in alignment with who I really am? Or what belief structures do I have in place that aren't serving my growth and expansion and learning or my highest good, my highest expression in this life experience? What are the structures or patterns that I have in place that could be holding me back? And that opened an enormous can of worms for me. So what I'm saying is, washing my brain has been one of the privileges of my lifetime. And I'm still doing it. And it's it's an ongoing process. I don't know. I expect there's not an end. But I wanted to share uh, that because someone who may be hearing this out there, um, if you're here, maybe you uh, need to hear this. Maybe having this idea reinforced for you is of benefit to you. Like, allow yourself to gently flirt with and challenge your own belief structures and systems and give yourself permission to choose something different from what you may have been offered. Now, so going back to my clickbait. Thank you, fat cells. I love you. I appreciate your work. So, (laughs) what... What inspired that was, okay, we all um, move through life being offered um, a cultural idea or ideal uh, of our physical body, our physical form, like, and it is cultural. What are we, what's the, what's, how is a man supposed to look? Like, what's the ideal male physique and what's the ideal uh, female figure? Like, we compare ourselves against what's culturally being offered. And that sort of, our brain, again, builds a structure, a belief structure around what we perceive, what we're being offered. So many of us kind of think, oh, fat is bad. Like, I need to be a certain BMI percentage and my body weight needs to be below this weight and I need to be able to fit into this size of clothing and I need to have my abs visible or I'm not worthy or, you know, there's like all of, there's a conversation happening culturally that we're all exposed to um, that shames fat and exalts muscle. But let's really think about this for a second. Um, Fat is an amazing thing. So back in the day before we had so much abundance before, before we had uh, access to so much food, sometimes we went for a while without eating very much. So our physical bodies evolved to the point where there was this magical substance called fat that could, when times were good, take the energy of the, from the food that we're consuming and store it away for us for a rainy day when we're not getting as much food. And so in other cultures and other times, being fat was actually a sign of affluence or privilege. Like if you were kind of portly, it indicated that you were well fed, that you had access to food and you were higher up on a socioeconomic ladder. So now let me be clear. Um, I'm not suggesting that we all need to go out and just uh, consume lots of cookies and become obese and uh, compromise our health or our, our vitality. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I am suggesting that we may change our belief structure around the idea of the substance of fat and having fat. Like it's there for a purpose. It's a magical thing. Um, It's part of our physiology 
we don't have to feel ashamed about it. We don't have to shame it. We don't have to shame ourselves for it. And as we're learning more and more about the consciousness of our bodies, we're beginning to realize through epigenetics and metaphysics and all kinds of different systems and modalities of, of science and spirituality that the consciousness of your body is aware of what you're thinking and feeling about it. So if you're shaming your fat, it's receiving the energy of that shame. So this is just one belief structure example that occurred to me today to use to entice you to listen to me drone on about this. Maybe you can think about, have you been shaming your fat? Um, do you really need to change the way you look? Or have you just been conditioned by the culture that you live in that there's a certain way you're supposed to look even if that's actually not what really serves you best to even try to look that way? Do you understand this? Now, I'm someone who absolutely is inspired to be physical and to work out. And, um, you know, when I work out, there's a mirror there, whether I go to a gym or I'm in my living room with my free weights and I'm like, like looking at my biceps as I do the curl. You know, I like that. It serves me well. If there comes a time where I don't want to do it anymore, I hope that I will give myself permission to change my structures and systems and habits and beliefs around the subject. But for now, I really like doing it. And although I am sending love to my fat cells, I'm not sure that I need quite so many of them. So fat cells, you have per my permission to go on vacation and stay a while and maybe not come back. So I hope this has been interesting and entertaining for you, and I hope, hope it's provoked you a little bit to think about if there are any belief structures that, uh, or systems that you have in place in your brain that you'd like to rethink or let go of. It's your privilege. I encourage you to wash your brain lots and lots and lots. Thanks so much for joining me. I think this has been the 41st episode of The Lightcast. I'm Jared Treadway, sending you love and light. Until next time.